What's up, generic viewers? If you guys haven't heard already, there is a new game coming out called Palea. Palea is a uh, massively multiplayer community simulation game set in a brand new high fantasy world with elements of open world adventure games. The game looks really cool, but all we've really seen from it is just their announcement trailer. There's not a lot of information. You can kind of guess a few things that might be in the game from the announcement trailer. But other than that, we don't really have a lot to go on. Well, Jin and I have been really excited about it ever since we saw the announcement trailer. You can actually watch our, res our reaction to the trailer um, in the description below. Uh, we posted it up it was on our stream. However, after that, we decided to join their Discord, and they actually have a section in their Discord where you can ask the devs questions. Some awesome people in the community have took it upon themselves to catalog all of those questions and answers in a Google Doc that we are going to be checking out here on stream. So basically, I'm going to look over these things and talk about the more interesting things, a uh, little bit of speculation from my part on what these things could mean, but... Overall, I want to give you a better idea of what this game uh, has in store, what you can expect from the full release of the game and the future of the game, and also what you can expect if you get into the pre-alpha, which signups are available now for content creators as well as anybody who's just trying to get into pre-alpha. We'll have the links in the description for those as well. So let's look at these. So first off, server. The main thing to take away from this section is that servers are not exclusive like they are in, say, World of Warcraft, where if you make a uh, character on a certain server, that's the server that you play on. Of course, World of Warcraft have cross servers stuff like that but they're just totally foregoing that entirely and you just join whatever current server that your friends are on it's not really necessarily like oh i'm going to join the server uh emerald dream or something like that it's just whatever server your friends are on that's the one you get to jump onto and play with them as well server size um they said that it's going to be in smaller uh but at the moment they're not giving any information on that course you'll be able to see it when you if you join the pre-alpha what size the server is but at the same time that could change they did say that uh for helping the servers to run well they are going to be doing certain things like making it so that if you're in north america you're going to be playing with other people in north america eu playing with other people in eu that kind of thing so now let's look at character creation um they are trying to avoid male and female mostly just using those those terms those pronouns male and female you're just going to be picking uh either a masculine presenting body or a feminine presenting body um they are going to have hairstyles that are interchangeable between both the faces are going to be unique to the masculine or the feminine uh body type but they're avoiding using any kind of gender specific terms so really you just pick whatever you like and you play whatever you like which i think is it's a really good way to you know do it i think that most games should do it that way um and they're saying that it's going to be pretty extensive as far as the character uh, creation goes they are going to be looking at a wider variety of facial structures and features as well meaning that you know you have different ethnicities that have different facial uh, features and stuff like that like they recently added in world of warcraft it seems like they are planning on adding something like that uh in the future i don't think that they have that implemented for pre-alpha though other races when the question of other races popped up they are saying that they're not ready to talk about that yet um, we do know that you're playing a human the whole story behind the game is that humans have been disappeared for you know thousands of years in Palea, and they are finally popping back up so it's part of the story that you play a human um, there is a fact somewhere that said they're working on elves but i don't know how accurate that is personally you know that me and jen would love to see some dwarves um <laughs> as a playable race or even if it's not a playable race as like a just in the world uh i think that they would fit really well um so i would love to, i've been dropping hints in the discord i did some art and everything just being like look how well they fit in the world with the big robot guy you guys have um so hopefully we do see something like that i would love to be able to play them but who knows um, naming, they said that it's unique usernames. They said probably not. Uh, usernames will be more like username, number, sign, one, two, three, four. Um, I don't know if that's just for alpha, pre alpha, or if that's going to be how the game is. Personally, I'm not sure why they wouldn't do unique usernames, like me being able to be, you know, I don't know, Dwarf Iron Bottom, like I usually am, even if it's just the Dwarf, the first name. Uh, hopefully they do something like that, but it seems like they said probably not. Um, 
but they said it hasn't been fully figured out, so we'll see about that. Surnames and titles are a possibility. It doesn't look like it's a plan. Uh, like, it's not going to, you know, it, they, they're just saying it's a possibility depending on feed community feedback. So as long as we tell them we want surnames, because I really do like surnames in, in MMOs. Um, but they're saying that there's going to be a lot of different hairstyle or hair colors and all that kind of stuff, skin colors and stuff, so that there's a, a good amount of customization. They say that they want you to be able to play the character that you want, you want, really want to play. So... Um, Color wheel or set palette as far as skin tone or hair color. Uh, they're saying it's a set palette at the moment, but it might turn into a color wheel later. Um, and then right now in pre-alpha, there is not going to be support for multiple characters, but they do want to have support for that in the future. Gear and equipment. Uh, when it comes to gear and equipment, yes, you can have cosmetic outfits, uh, which they say that there is already a dazzling variety in the game as it is now. I think that that's going to be a huge part of the game is everybody's going to want to be able to look unique, not just like the generic villager that you see at the beginning of the, you know, in the trailer. Um, everybody's going to be want, want to look unique. Hopefully they don't go overboard so that, you know, you look totally out of place, but who knows? We'll see. Um, a lot of games end up doing that anyways. Uh, they do say that your tools, like the pickaxe, the fishing rod, and the butterfly net will have quality tiers. You only have one at a time, so higher quality tier tools will replace your low, lower quality ones instead of you having three pickaxes that all do, you know, different level of things. There's a huge variety of harvestable and gatherable craftable items you can have in your inventory, but tools specifically, they don't want you to be having to fumble through a bunch of different tools whenever you're trying to do stuff. So they say that they're trying to streamline that a bit and make it a little simpler. Outfit slots are guaranteed is what this says, which is great because people, you know, one of the things that w that a lot of uh, MMOs tend to do later on that they should do at the beginning is have the ability to set outfit slots, you know, so that you could be like, I want this outfit, I want this outfit, rather than having to actually be like, this hat goes with this shirt, then you have to equip each item. You could just equip a whole outfit. And they said that why stop at one slot for outfits? So hopefully there's going to be multiple. When it comes to the world of Palea, travel options, our, our world is meant to feel large and have lots of things to do slash discover but we don't believe in spending an hour to travel between zones. So they said that they have a pretty open fast travel system in alpha, considering all forms of feedback. So it seems like you're going to be able to jump back and forth. They said that, so it says later that they're, they don't, they don't have portals, but their their fast travel system works kind of like that. So I'm a little confused whether or not there's magic in the game. It definitely doesn't seem like magic is a focus at all, um, if there is. But uh, we will have to see. But travel options, there is definitely going to be fast travel, which is awesome. How open is the world? This is a, an important one. They say open but curated. Um, if we go too up and we never squash the bugs, we definitely want environment traversal to feel fun. Hence the glider, the Breath of the Wild glider that you see in the trailer, um, which is really cool. I, I loved that kind of travel, being able to use the glider in, in Breath of the Wild. So um, I'm looking forward to that. But I like I like open world games, but I also like the fact that open world open but cu uh, curated sounds like, you know, they're they're giving us areas that they want us to play in. It's still vast areas that they want us to play in. But those areas are very specific and and. You know, it's not just it's not as much like random generated trees and that kind of stuff. You know, they want it to feel like a, you know, very intentional, everything very intentional, which is really cool. They're trying to use real geometry instead of invisible walls. So if you're coming up to the edge of the map, the playable map, you're not going to just start running in place and not running into anything. None of that stuff. None of that stuff going on. They said they are starting smaller, but they aim to grow bigger. One of the things that I read that's really cool is that all of the buildings are interable, which is great because I, I think that games tend to, you know, when they close off these doors, of course you can't just in real in real life just run into somebody's house. I mean, you could if it was unlocked, but that would be looked down upon. Um, but they are, all the buildings are interable, meaning all of them have interiors. They did say that you might not be able to get into some at certain times of day because people have their houses closed. I mean, NPCs, you know, they're trying to sleep or something. So the as far as time goes in the game, currently one uh, IRL hour is a game day. So that means 15 minutes of morning, 15 minutes of afternoon, 15 minutes of evening, 15 minutes of night. Oceans, islands, ships, and sea travel, they want to do that. Whoever answered this one, whichever dev answered this said, if I get my way, yes. They want to do that. I think that it's on their list of things to add to the game, but they said that the community feedback is going to prioritize what they add 
to the game and what they do. Um, so there are ways to fill out surveys and everything and be like, hey, we want this. Um, I think that would be really cool. I don't know if that's going to be anything that they're going to come out with even in the initial release of the game, um, but it would be nice to see eventually. Uh, tons of Easter eggs and pop culture is going to be in the game, which is awesome. That's always a great thing that any game does. Um, a lot of people... Yeah, there might be some people who don't like that, but personally, I, I love to see that kind of stuff. So I'm excited about that for sure. Uh, as far as weather goes, they say, yes, Paleo has weather, but we're not ready to tell you about the weather. I don't know why they'd be secretive about it. It's kind of weird, but there is going to be different weather, you know, so rain, sunshine, windy, all that kind of stuff. I would imagine it's going to be there. I'm not sure why they're not talking about it yet but uh and then somebody said portals nothing so magic-y as portals our fast travel system is kind of similar though so maybe they're focusing more on technology rather than magic because you see the um golem robot in there um maybe they're going to be it's going to be a little bit more that technology is being used rather than magic but uh, i'm not sure we'll see Gameplay, this is the important, the most important part. We are very keen on cooperative features of uh, for all of our skills. Can't say anything specific beyond that. So pretty much they really want to focus on co-op, which makes perfect sense because, I mean, it is a co-op game. It's an MMO. Um, but it says that they're, they're keen on cooperative features in all of the skills. So there's going to be, it seems like there's going to be some way to do co-op things with pretty much every skill that you're doing which is hunting fishing um i don't know what else would would be in there they they had mentioned a few things mining all that kind of stuff uh so it'll be interesting uh to see how they do that but we know that hunting is going to be there uh they say that it uses a the bow uses crosshairs so and then they've said too much um so we at least know that that's how the aiming system is going to work, bow with crosshairs. I don't know if the bows are going to have any kind of drop, like the arrows are going to have drop where you have to aim higher. Um, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, fishing skills, yes, there is going to be more fishing, and it's more than cast and RNG. So you're not just going to sit there and cast into water and then just click whenever a fish bites and whatever you get is just randomly what you get. Um, they are going to make it a little bit more involved. It's uh, going to be more involved than Animal Crossing, but not as difficult as Stardew is what they are pretty much saying. Uh, Stardew's fish fishing difficulty is very hard, um, but they're trying to aim to have, you know, they're, they're, they want it to be that if you are a low-level fisher, you're going to be able to still fish without, you know, having to be great at the mechanic. Um so that's pretty interesting. I, I like that it's not going to be as simple as like Animal Crossing and stuff. There's a little bit more involved, but Stardew's fishing is just ridiculously difficult. So, um, but yeah, then you are going to have to be like, you go to this specific place to catch these kind of fish or this time of day or this time of uh, this season possibly uh, to catch fish. And that is definitely cool. It says, yeah, we have time of day fish. Yes. Uh, combat. This one is interesting to me because they say that it's supposed to have aspects of uh, adventure games, but it says combat. We are not ready to get into details on this yet, but we will have combat like systems such as hunting and eventually more traditional combat. It's interesting to me that they're saying eventually that's not even something that's the pre alpha as it is and uh, possibly not something that's going to be in the game when it's released. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it seems like, you know, they're saying that they're focusing on all of the the gathering and, and, and you know, like life sim kind of stuff uh, first before that. And then, of course, they said, like most of our skills, you'll be able to choose your level of participation in them. So that's good. Uh, if you don't want to combat, do combat, you don't have to. Hunting in pre alpha hunting is the most action oriented skill that is available. So. It's not combat. They are going to, uh, they said that they have some exciting plans on action space for the game, but they can't tell you anything about it right now. Um, your patience is appreciated here. Uh, so it looks like the most that we're going to do get to do as far as the action adventure side of things is hunting in the pre-alpha. Um, very interested to see how the how they're going to put combat into this. Uh, party size is not set in stone right now. I think that it is currently in pre-alpha. It's going to be four uh, per party, but there's that's not necessarily how it's going to stay. Um, character death. This one is very, very intriguing. Character death. No death or health, even, is what it says. I don't know if that's just right now or if they're not going to have that ever, um, which makes me question how combat is even going to work. Uh, so 
I, I'm very, very interested to see that because one of the things that I was really excited is having this kind of Breath of the Wild-esque, Zelda-esque, you know, go out on an adventure and then come back and be able to decorate your home and, and, and take care of your farm and, you know, all of that stuff kind of being both things that you can do in this game. Um, and they said that there's going to be combat, but without player death or health, I mean, you don't have to have player death. You can have KOs or something like that. But without health, it's it's very weird. So uh, definitely going to see how that plays out. Um, so magic skill line, definitely no magic skills to level up like hunting at the moment. So there is no magic in the game at the moment. No wizardry or, you know, apothecary stuff or anything like that. Um, right now it's stuff like hunting and fishing, it seems. Uh, I don't know if they'll have any, but right now there's not any. Progression, uh, they're trying to avoid the typical grind of MMOs, but you will have lots of bars and levels to, bars to fill, levels to gain. Uh, so you are going to be prog doing progression, of course. Um, guilds, they are called neighborhoods in this game, and you will be able to make your own and invite whoever you want to. Um, they're going to have different, different levels of difficulty for the activities and stuff. Um, but you'll, you know, people are just going to gravitate towards whatever they want. Um, and they said that it's definitely going to be challenging. In-game, a lot of people were complaining about Animal Crossing not having in-game. I can attest to that. I stopped playing Animal Crossing because I feel like it ended up being very repetitive and there wasn't really, you know, I, I didn't see any more to do, especially after, like, you pay off your mortgage and stuff. So uh, they're saying that they, they're not really going into what in-game is going to be, but they're saying that they don't want to have the same fate as Animal Crossing with that lack of in-game. So that's good that they are aware of that. Um, jumping, yes. That's all you need to know. Uh, achievement systems will be in there. Uh, they said that they're definitely going to have achievements, achievement systems at some point. They're saying it's going to be very different from a traditional MMO or a traditional RPG, but there are still going to be MMO RPG aspects of it. There will be group adventures, maybe dungeon-like, but we won't have huge things like raids that require a lot of prep or grinding beforehand. So they are going to have, uh, hopefully they're going to have something like, I think that dungeons, almost the same way that um, Breath of the Wild had the shrines, not necessarily going in there and doing puzzles. Puzzle Doing puzzles with the group would be really fun, though. But going into like something like a shrine or something like that and having those um, kind of as the dungeons and everything, that would be really cool. So there are definitely going to be group adventuring things to do, um, but no big raids or anything like that and worrying about, you know, hitting your gear score and staying with the raid. Hopefully they don't kick you out my game. RP, and this as far as role-playing with other players... Um, a, a lot of the members of the team are RPers. They role played in World of Warcraft and such. So they said that they are very aware while creating things um, in the game and designing the game. They are definitely taking into consideration role playing as far as players being able to role play. So I think that's really cool because you know we. I feel like this game has a lot of potential as far as role playing goes, and I think that it has has a lot of potential to, to attract the RP crowd. Um, because of just the, the nature of the game, this, you know, high fantasy world where you're pretty much living a life. It's, it's definitely lends to RP very well. So they are looking at that kind of thing. And then they're, it says here that they're going to have emotes. They say, they mentioned titles, even though that they said titles were kind of, you know, possible in the future, but emotes is, I hope the emotes are extensive and I hope that they have player player to player emotes you know emotes like where you shake hands and stuff like that that's something that a lot of mmos don't do and it bugs me like i get it you know it's hard to line up the animations and stuff like that and you also don't want to force other players characters to do things that they don't want to do but if if i just say like my character you know i walk up to another character and i emote to, to shake his hand it should just prompt the other character you know, I targeted him and I said, shake hand. I put my hand out and if they don't respond in time, then my character kind of like awkwardly like looks down at his own hand and then puts it down. You know, the same way that it would happen if somebody just didn't agree to shake your hand. So I think that that'd be really cool. I hope that there is uh, player to player um, emotes and stuff in there. Um, even more than that, like multiple player emotes would be really cool. PvP, there's not really going to be any PvP, especially since they don't really talk about combat, so I don't think the PvP is going to be a big deal. The most PvP-like thing that they have mentioned at all thus far is um, skill PvP. So cooking competitions or hunting competitions or fishing competitions, that kind of stuff. But 
they were saying uh, one of the things that they say on here, if PvP means competitive gameplay, then we'll have some. If PvP means duels in the middle of town, nah. I'm all good with that. I personally am not a fan of PvP in general, so I'm, I'm down. <laughs> Uh, crafting and gathering, uh, you'll never have to pay money t or t be told to come back later just to craft something. So basically, if you have, I would imagine if you have the skill, I think that you would have to level up the skill. But if you have the skill and you have the the items to make something, you can make it. There's no gonna, and it's not going to be like you know, you have to uh, have a certain amount of money to maybe I guess learn a skill or something like that. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, how long does crafting take? They don't really say yet, but we'll find out in pre-alpha. Um, you, There's no stamina bar, which is awesome because, you know, a lot of games it's like you go out and you start doing something and your stamina, stamina bar slowly goes down and eventually you can't cut down trees anymore because your stamina bar is gone and you have to, like, sleep or something or rest. Uh, that's not a thing. So you can cut down trees to your heart's content. You can mine to your heart's content, all that kind of stuff. Um, there will be cooking... Uh, infinite regrow regrowable lumber yards and quarries. Um, all of those things are going to be available, uh, possible. So that's really cool. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to do that on your own housing plot or if it's going to be in some other way, but that's still uh, super cool. Um, there's all kinds of trees. Food does not rot. That's good to know. So you're not going to you know, have an apple in your inventory or in your storage or something like that that just goes bad. Uh, not all, not super realistic, but, you know, I don't think that anybody really cares about that. Or mo most people do. I don't, at least. Um, food made by people who are really good at cooking is going to be really good. Food made by people who aren't great at cooking is going to be not great. Uh, I, I think that that just depends on what kind of properties the food has. Um, but we know that if you have a higher cooking skill, you're going to be able to make uh, food that gives you a greater buff when it comes to hunting or something like that. I would assume that, especially since there's no health or stamina, I would assume that it would probably just be buff food. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. No plans for animal husbandry is the question. They say that that's not technically true. It seems like it's not in the game at the moment, but it is definitely something that they always have in mind, and I feel like it'll be a thing eventually. Um, animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is basically not weird. <laughs> Let me Google animal husbandry for Jen. The science of breeding and caring for farm animals. Thank you. So at the moment, animal husbandry uh, doesn't seem like it's a thing. There are long-term plans for it, but right now that's not really the focus on things, it seems. They're saying that they will have it eventually. I think I can state that taming animals or animal husbandry is a common topic for us at the studio. I feel like the game needs it, so hopefully they do come out with it. Mounts and pets. That's something that I was am actually really hoping that they put into the game. Uh, right now it says we see the categories uh, uh, as fast travel and pets. Both are on the roadmap in some form. Not going to be there at the beginning. Hopefully it will be there down the line. Uh, I feel like a lot of that is, is the case here. Um, lands and housing. So you earn your right to your housing plot through a quest line. I feel like you're just going to start the game. You're going to go through the initial quest line and then you're going to get a housing plot. Um, your home is intended to be a cozy and private space, but you can have visitors. It seems like the way that they word it is you can't have open housing where people can pop in all the time. Any person can pop in all the time. Um, they might have it so that you can have friends be able to pop in whenever you want. But it seems at the moment right now the, the focus is you have your own plot of land, you have your own house, and you can invite your friends when you want to. Um, but it's yours. There's no co-op ownership of land. So me and Jen don't get to own a house together. Yeah, We're get out of here! <laughs> We're going to have our own houses that are separate. Um, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a way to allow people to edit your stuff either. So it's just like, you know, you can they can come over and hang out, but your house is en entirely your own, editable to you, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it says land share is not possible uh, in alpha. Maybe it's something they'll, they'll change eventually. Um, both the outside and the inside of your house is instanced, so it is... Uh, the plot of land that you live on as well as, you know, the inside of your house are instanced. Um, I don't know if those are instanced together. I would assume that they're instanced together, but I don't know. They might be two separate ones. Um, and then they say that the – so it says currently our housing is instanced off in private spaces. There will always be ways for players to show off their plots but not uh, will not be so free as to someone running by your house. As such, there is no shortage of real estate for players uh, to have access to housing. So, you're not going to be able to just run down the road and see someone's house. 
that you can go to. That kind of bums me out. I understand because you, you need space, like you can't, you'll end up running out of space depending on what server you're on. But if they're planning on doing smaller servers anyway, like the, the number of players on a server is gonna be on the smaller side, I feel like they could get away with allowing multiple plots and you know just having them so that you can physically see them in the world rather than having to run into something but they said there's no loading screen so I would imagine it's just you run into a certain I don't know a, a door or a, a path or something like that and it just immediately kind of takes you to the instance version um, or you talk to someone and, and you you port into your instance version of your home not sure kind of a bummer that it's not just you know physically there but uh yeah we'll see we'll see how that how that turns out and of course keep in mind i'm, I'm just kind of telling you my interpretation of these things because they're not all super clear no purchasing or selling of commodities uh and or lands so you're not going to be selling your land or house or anything like that in the game um so it's not like final fantasy 14 where you have a plot of land that you can buy for your fc house or your personal ho housing and then sell it to someone or anything like that so None of that. You attach rooms and rotate rooms to a floor plan. So it seems like it's not going to have, you know, laying down the floors and then building the walls and that kind of stuff like you do. Building a roof like you do in, like, Minecraft or something. Um, it's going to be more like you have this room and you can make that room maybe a certain, you know, width or something like that. And you just kind of tack it on wherever you want it. Um, this, the, ga the houses are going to be one story at the moment. No basement. No, no second uh, floor. That's something that they are prob might add to the future. Uh, they might add that in the future, but at the moment, it is only one story, um, which I, I honestly don't see a problem with. I think that that would be fine. Cooperative housing is a goal for them, though, so that's good to know that that is on, uh, that is on the roadmap. That is something that they want to get to eventually. No stealing, so you can't go into somebody's house and just take their shit. Um, and there's no terraforming, but it says customization options for your plot will get very interesting. So you're not going to go out there and be like, I want this area to be lower. Or I want this area to be higher. Like it doesn't have Minecraft level terraforming, you know, furniture interaction. It says furniture interaction. Forgive us for this one for pre-alpha. I'm guessing that that means you can't interact with any of your furniture in pre-alpha kind of sucks, but you know, it's pre-alpha. So it's, it's totally understandable. Um, but yeah, it just seems like you won't be able to sit down in your chair or your beds or anything like that. Furniture positioning is not 100% free, but you can, uh, they give you some freedom, but it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be, um, specifically on like a grid or if it's going to be just like, you can't, you know, collide in like, you know, put your dresser and your couch kind of clipping into each other that kind of thing um so it's not 100 percent free but you can clutter the services like tables and shelves with little items uh so long as they all fit so that's cool i really do think that um like housing and everything looks more f more lived in when you have more clutter on top of surfaces and stuff like that uh for sure and from the trailer you could see that there's a decent amount of clutter that makes it look like it's actually a lived in house rather than just some pre-made prefab thing so that I'm excited about. Um, thematic furniture is the plan, so you know there will definitely be full thematic sets of furniture. Pre-alpha. So they said they will send out emails if you are accepted in the pre-alpha, and then they are going to post that the emails have been sent out, probably on Twitter, most likely, most definitely in, in Discord. Um, so, yeah, we don't have a timeline as to when those are coming out. Uh, it could be months. It could be a month. It could be months is what they said. Um, but it's not going to be you know, quarters or years or anything like that. Uh, super play, they, they're, yeah. the pre-alpha is, <laughs> that was a good one, super high, blah. super high, blah, blah. the pre-alpha is uh, super playable and there is lots to do. That is very good to know. Uh, pre-alpha is, I mean, not even alpha usually just is really, really basic. Uh, I'm surprised they're calling it pre-alpha. I'm not sure why it, they're technically referring to it as pre-alpha and not just alpha, but, um, yeah, it's good to know that there's going to be stuff in there. It is under NDA, so you're not going to be seeing any videos of us showing you around or any streams from us. Uh, because if we do get into the pre-alpha, we're going to be under NDA. But I feel like we're pretty much just to be, be able to be like, so far. Or so far. Hmm. But yeah, so if you're, if you're looking to get into pre-alpha, just know that you're not going to be able to use it for any kind of content. There will be multiple wipes during the pre-alpha, so keep that in mind. They're going to try to get as many people into the pre-alpha as they can. Uh, I, they're not giving a specific number, but they said that they want to get a, a good amount of people. There's not going to be any sort of cash 
for getting into the alpha. So there's no paying to get in. So just keep that in mind, um, which I think is a good thing personally. Duration, they don't know how long the pre-alpha is going to last um, before it goes into alpha or beta or anything like that. Final release, it's too early to say, uh, we're talking pre-alpha here, so that makes total sense that it's too early to say, uh, release date five years, ain't nobody got time for that. So that's good to know that it's not five years. Um, they can't tell us exactly, but they said that we're much closer than three years away from launch. So I'm gonna say if they're much closer than three years, probably two, maybe two years, uh, because the game just got announced, but it's been they've been working on it since 2018. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think two years is a good is a good guess on my part. Um, so 2023. I, I, I had to stop and think to make sure I got that right. I got that math correct. The UI, they're just, you know, they said that they're targeting simpler side of things when it comes to the UI. Um, you guys can read through this. I didn't really find a lot of interesting stuff in the UI. Um, favorite inventory sorting. I think for the game like this, our categorical sorting is most important. Uh, but things to be achieved with filters. So categorical sorting of items that you can use filters or probably searchable. I hope it's searchable, because uh, that's super helpful. Music, it's all their own composer, uh, and it is all, they said that it's totally cool to stream, so no getting Twitch strikes for music. <laughs> uh, I'm actually really excited about the music because I think that, you know, the these kind of games, if it, it just has to be this very chill, relaxing kind of music and I think that they're going to be able to achieve it to be honest um, the music in the there wasn't a lot of music in the trailer but it seemed like they're on the right track for sure no minimum or max no no minimum or recommended specs yet um, that'll come in time uh, they're starting with PC they're creating the game for PC all of the pre-alpha stuff is going to be on PC they said that they want to create it for PC and then port it to consoles um, they are going to try as hard as they can to uh, support crossplay. Um, but that really all just depends on the other platforms, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, so there is plans for it to be on other uh, consoles and stuff, but right now it's PC only. VR is not out of the question. Uh, they it, The game is made in Unreal 4 engine, I believe, so uh, VR is... is the, they're not saying that they're planning on doing that, but I, I feel like that it's, it's definitely uh, a possibility. Some of their devs already play VR games, so I would imagine that... You know, it might be something in the future. I think it'd be really cool in VR. Accessibility, uh, of course, pre-alpha might not have a lot of, is not going to have a lot of things like the colorblind options, um, but it's stuff that they definitely intend on adding. There is no controller support uh, in the pre-alpha. Um, I don't know if they're going to have controller support by the release either, but no, no controller support at the moment. NPC romances, you can romance, uh, you can build relationships and romance with uh, NPCs. Um, they said that they'll have relationships and romance, things like spouses and children will come later. Only NPCs at the moment, from what they're saying, you can't romance or, you know, marry another player. I hope that they do add that, because obviously Jen and I would get married. Right, Jen? Yeah! Yeah, see? She said right, yeah. Good to know. Villagers have lives to live as, as well, so you'll see them around the world, so they're gonna be walking around doing their own thing, uh, which is cool. Um... Romances will be only between players and NPCs. Gender doesn't matter. Currently, no players to player to player romance, but they're looking into it. Um, just and then it says that the one of the house sharing related questions. It's also related to house sharing. Uh, romance multiple NPCs. Yeah, you can, but I mean, come on, don't you know they might be upset by that. You know, don't be a player. You know, um, but yes, you can do that. Einar is the name of the robot, and it says, will Einar be a regular NPC, or will he help you out? And they said, Einar has his own routines and interests. You're going to have to talk to him to find out more. So, who knows, but possibly. Uh, dialogues with NPCs, there is choices. They are going to have, you know, different, I, I, I would guess that they would just have different, you know, tiers of choices and everything, and branches, and your choices branch out to other things. Um, I think that's really cool, so we'll see about that. Um, there will be incentives in in engaging with NPCs deeply, which is a really weird way to say it. Um, as to what exactly, we we don't know yet. It's a mystery. Anti griefing. Uh, I don't feel like there's a lot of ways you can grief in this game. Uh, it seems, especially since there's no PvP. But they are going to be t taking a very close, you know, look at it and making sure that they are going to do everything they can to make the anti griefing work 
as well as it can in the game. But like I said, I feel like the mo- the worst like anti the the worst griefing that you're gonna experience in this kind of game is just people being shitty people, um, which would in turn in turn just like you know word blocking words and stuff like certain words on lists and stuff or just banning reporting and banning uh player housing and trade so auction player trading and auction houses there is going to be player trading you're going to be able to give items to other players and stuff like that um they said they have a pretty unique approach to it so i'm not sure exactly how it's going to be unique but that's cool game economy will exist they're not saying anything about it at the moment but that's going to be a thing so i would imagine that that means well i that means that you're going to be able to buy and sell from other players and that kind of stuff. So I would imagine like an auction house, maybe a farmer's market or something. That'd be really cool. Lore is definitely something they're very passionate about. There's going to be a lot of lore in the game. And building relationships with NPCs is going to give you more information on that lore. Uh, localization, they are going to localize it for other other countries and other languages and stuff. But right now, pre-alpha is English only. Engine is Unreal 4. Uh, no plans for an a- API yet. So that's, you know, APIs are used for mods and add-ons and stuff like that. They don't have any plans for it at the moment, so. Um, And then it looks like that's about it. They've got a team of about 50 people working on the game. Uh, So, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be really cool. Uh, I'm super interested to see where they go with... From here, I really need to see more about the combat. I know that pre-alpha is not going to be focused on that as much, but the combat aspect of it is kind of a make or break with me. Um so I'm mean, I'm interested for us to be able to get into the pre-alpha and check out all of the stuff like you know the house building and the gathering and the crafting all that kind of stuff. But um, I am super kind of anxious to find out exactly what they plan on doing when it comes to combat because I really would like to see some Zelda Breath of the Wild style combat. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching that video. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, and we are really excited about Palea. You can stick around to Generic Live. Uh, on this channel, we will hopefully give you some more updates in the future. Uh, don't forget that we stream on twitch.tv slash generic live. Jen and I stream together. We are partner Twitch streamers over there. <laughs> That's not really that big of a deal. Anyway, um, but we love you guys. Thanks to all of our patrons. You guys are all amazing. I'm pointing over here at nothing because it's actually... You're probably just listening to my voice. Anyways... <clears throat> Thanks to supporting us. Thanks for supporting us on Patreon. We really appreciate it. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.